Ever since they arrived on the galactic scene, the Driss have been looking for the human's weakness in battle. It wasn't like they were perfect. They had plenty of minor weaknesses, but nothing that could be exploited. Every time they found one, the humans were already aware of it and had defenses or countermeasures in place. But ever since the humans defeated them when they attempted to annex two independent systems, they have been plotting their revenge. Then we met a new race, called the Uraxans, an arachnid race that had just achieved FTO travel. The sight of three quarters of the human diplomatic team either freezing in terror or just straight up running away, the Driss knew they had found it. The humans did everything they could to become allies with them, offering trade deals that greatly favoured the Araxans, sending gifts of great value, and even offering them a system they had recently terraformed but not yet colonised. It was clear the humans feared the Araxans, despite outmatching the new race in every financial, political and military way. Unfortunately for the Driss, the Araxans had accepted the humans' overtures and had no intention of siding with them. Unfortunately for the Araxans, the Driss held no such fear of them, and were happy to be patient. Covertly, they captured a large number of Araxans over the course of a year, then spent a decade breeding the quick maturing captives and using control chips to force them to follow whatever orders they were given. They trained these captives to fight against their docile and friendly nature, developed advanced weapons specifically for them, and 15 years after first contact with the Araxans, invaded the closest human system with their new army. It went perfectly, at first. The humans were so distracted by their instinctual fear of arachnids, the Driss's Uraxan troops won 90% of engagements in the first two weeks, taking two-thirds of the terraformed planet and all but two of the hundreds of stations and colonies across the rest of the system in a rapid blitz. They even cut off diplomatic ties with the Uraxans, believing themselves betrayed by the race they put so much effort into appeasing. We knew of the humans' temper, and thought their response to the Uraxans would be severe. That's when some of us realised something was wrong. The humans didn't seem scared or even angry at the betrayal. They seemed hurt. As some of us dig deeper, we realised they hadn't offered the Uraxans all those bribes and tributes out of fear. They had done it out of shame. They had felt so bad at recalling in horror when they first saw them. They had seen their revulsion as a grave insult to what was actually a perfectly nice and reasonable race, and had offered all that as an apology. They hadn't avoided the Araxan system because they were afraid, which they still were whenever they saw them. They had done it because they were worried about inflicting further insult upon the Araxans. When the humans found the control chip, we thought they would be angry at how the Driss had driven a wedge between the races, and they were. We thought they would be enraged at the thought of the Driss using control chips to force others to fight, knowing the reminder of their own dark history was something they hated, and they were. But the fact they had done it to such a docile and friendly race, one the humans already felt shame about insulting at first contact, and had now furthered their shame by cutting ties with them when they were innocent. It elicited a reaction we were completely unprepared for. They changed tactics choosing to fight at a severe disadvantage so they could capture Araxan troops, doing everything they could to not kill the enemy, losing many more troops than they would have if they had just fought to kill the enemy. The initial fear they had shown when fighting Araxans was gone. It turns out you can make a human angry enough to ignore even primal instinctual terror, but even then, they still fought within their honourable rules of engagement. It took a massive diversion of their military to achieve this victory, leaving more than one system open to invasion by the Driss. Once they had recaptured the system from the Araxan state troops, the humans gave the Driss an ultimatum. Return all systems taken, release all Araxans they had captured, and give the Araxans a full resource-rich system as compensation for the terrible crimes committed against them, or else. The Driss were still oblivious to the incoming storm, thinking they had outmaneuvered the mighty, warlike humans. By the time the humans had recaptured their system and saved the Araxans they were fighting against, the Driss were deeply entrenched in the other systems they had taken. It would take years to take them back. Or so we all thought. So the Driss refused. The humans' response chilled us all to the bone. So, you want to play dirty games with us? Remember, this was your choice. What happens next is on you. The humans never broke their own laws of war and combat, not in any way that was provable, in court anyway. They provided endless legal documents to prove they were unable to capture the large numbers of their own military that had gone rogue, 
and were now committing terrible atrocities against Drist military targets. Napalm, cluster bomb, and sarin became the most feared words in the galaxy. Even when we could prove they had completely collapsed the Driss economy and taken 90% of all their financial accounts held in galactic banks, they practically drowned the course in records, proving this was all legal. It took 20 years to close all of those loopholes. There was only implied but unprovable threats from the humans that stopped those loopholes being exploited by others. The humans never touched a credit of anyone else's money. When a prison transport that just so happened to house their 10,000 most dangerous and violent psychopathic serial killers had managed to be overtaken by the inmates and landed on the Driss planet, no one could prove it was deliberate. The crimes committed on that planet still haunt the nightmares of anyone who investigated them. And no one could ever prove that the terrorists who had captured and skinned Driss leaders on the live broadcast of the galaxy weren't actually terrorists with no connection to them despite how they seemed to have cutting-edge human weaponry and technology. It took the Driss two months to surrender unconditionally.